Hi there, welcome to the Tinfoil Hat Fallacy, a program about uh, philosophy and science. And I'm going to be basically critiquing a popular belief that one can discredit scientific information when it's produced by the government or when the research behind it is funded by the state. And you, you see this kind of argument uh, around 9-11, around uh, climate change. And as I'm going to address today, you also see it around uh, nutritional science. So for a long time, evidence has been building that it's unhealthy to eat meat. And there's, there's a great deal of evidence to support this claim. But some people, particularly from the low-carb and paleo community, feel that this evidence is untrustworthy because it's produced by the the government and I mean, this is not an unreasonable kind of criticism um you know for centuries uh, governments have have made it difficult for scientists to publish research um and have have even uh, pressed scientists who came up with ideas that were unpopular because of course politicians um have to appease the masses and and the ignorance of, of people they're about um, maintaining popularity and of course popularity has absolutely nothing to do with the truth so this is an entirely unreasonable kind of claim but what you'll spot here if you're familiar with fallacies is that this claim that state funding corrupt science or corrupted a scientific finding to be spe more specific it's an example of the non sequitur, so it's sim which is is this it's simply too big a gap between the proposition and the conclusion to be acceptable. So the claim and the conclusion require too many leaps of faith uh, from get to get from one to the other. So if you if you want to explain something, you really need to come up with a cogent hypothesis and I'll probably talk about this in another program um, but you have to have a well thought out idea and it has to meet certain criteria and this proposition really doesn't doesn't do it um, that's not to say that it's wrong propositions can be absolutely correct even though there's fallacies involved in them even though perhaps there's even some uh, research data that just happens to be wrong so, you know, a fallacy isn't the end of the world for a particular idea. It just means you're going to kind of dismiss it or you, you want to say, well, look, you've got to come up with something better than that. So that's, that's the immediate sort of philosophical problem with these tinfoil hat fallacies, for being non sequiturs. But there's a lot more to this. If, if the government is engaged in this, what would be a very large uh, degree of, of fraud and falsification, how come it's not being reported? It's, is, is the government being entirely successful at, at twisting you know, hundreds of, of research papers and, and, and perhaps thousands of scientific findings? How, how's it doing this? And how come we're not seeing uh, a paper trail? Sure, I mean, surely such a ex huge exercise in managing information, that something's going to leak out. You know, there's going to be an email, there's going to be a threat made or something like that. And it's going to go into the public domain. Uh, and, and bear in mind, you know, there's, there's thousands of people involved in nutritional science. And, and there's centuries of findings now, or, or over a century of findings now, uh, that are consistently indicating that meat is unhealthy. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's quite a big exercise in cover-up. Now, you know, if a cover-up only needs to involve one or two people or a handful, uh, then certainly... The government does and and has or governments have been involved in such cover-ups threats and so on and so forth intimidation etc um, but e even those um, smaller scale threats we, we still hear about those and find out about those as well so this this kind of, of extensive manipulating of information I think is, is very difficult to carry off and, and claims that are based on this are quite extraordinary and, and therefore require extraordinary evidence. Uh, we, we can't just take them at face value. And there's, I mean, there's some more details to this story as well. Scientific evidence isn't all necessarily uh, obtained by through research. Sometimes there's like accidental findings. So 
for example, uh, surgeons working on combat casualties in Vietnam were were cutting open the um, the dead soldiers, and they were finding extensive atherosclerosis in their hearts and and uh, arteries. So, of course, that's not a government-funded project. Um, it's very difficult, I would imagine, to uh, cover up this kind of evidence or, or, or influence it. it. Because initially it's just a sort of random founding. Oh, look what we found here. So it isn't even you know, evidence against meat-eating as such in this individual case. It's just an independent finding that got reported. And there's a similar thing as well. Um, scientists have found three or 400-year-old mummified remains of Eskimos or Inuit peoples and these also had extensive atherosclerosis and again this is problematic to the low carbon paleo folks because of course these people have never touched a loaf of bread or a bag of sugar Um, so how come they had atherosclerosis and again this is one of these sort of kind of random findings that is not it's not a deliberate research attempt to bolster a foregone conclusion it's just oh we dug a body up and it had atherosclerosis but that finding is, is very important in, in terms of building up the overall picture. And another example of this is the corpse of Otzi, who was thousands of years old. A man who was killed by, I think, uh, they think um, a bow and arrow, possibly some other, other fatal injuries. And yeah, okay, so he was from an era in which there was a certain amount of agriculture going on. Uh, dairy products were being eaten, which of course paleo crew would say is unnatural and so on and so forth. But anyway, he had he had atherosclerosis. So uh, that's another one of these sort of accidental findings that, again, they, they, they kind of discredit certain hypotheses and support other hypotheses around diet and health. And they discredit the idea that it's it's healthy to eat animal products. Because when you look at the bodies of people that don't eat a lot of saturated fat, cholesterol, animal products, etc., when you look at populations uh, like the Japanese who eat very little meat um, and, and you know, little to no dairy, or at least historically so, uh, you don't find atherosclerosis is, is endemic. And another one of these findings is uh, studies of the Maasai, who eat a lot of meat and dairy, and unsurprisingly have lots of atherosclerosis. So this is, you know, I'm just pointing out that there's all kinds of different evidence uh, that that uh, science has produced, and and it's very difficult to to manipulate and cover it all up. Eventually, the the truth comes out. And with respect to nutritional advice, it's a fact that the governments have been misrepresenting it and distorting it, and and this is well known in the scientific community. Um, they, the nutritional advisory bodies, uh, uh, and it is documented in the book, which I'll mention underneath, have been populated with industrial interests, uh, agricultural interests, and they've been hugely influential on forming uh, public policy, uh, so uh, as they call it, and suppressing uh, the scientific findings. And, and, and again, I mean, this is supports really the idea that you shouldn't trust government sources of information but you know at at face value you you need to look at what's behind what's being said and examine it a bit more carefully and i mean another example is the the uk government funded some creation of a scientific body to report on the risks and dangers of using street drugs and the, the scientific body came back with a finding that the government didn't like i mean i think they said something basically along the lines that I think it was mushrooms, magic mushrooms, and cannabis aren't actually that harmful. I mean, magic mushrooms, there's, there's very little evidence of any harm at all from them. And so the scientists said, you know, alcohol and tobacco are hugely harmful. These other recreational drugs are not so. Therefore, your your public policy uh, doesn't really line up with the, the science. And the government, of course, because they employed the chief scientists, they were all on the government payroll, they basically fired... Uh, the head scientist of the group and of course this sets uh, a precedent to to scientists to not say things that uh, aren't on message uh, for the government and yeah it's it's a very dangerous and unsatisfactory situation and you know really there ought to be accountability for the statesmen that do this kind of thing it's 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 wicked and it's uh, interfering with the truth 
I'm going to close with that point. I hope you've enjoyed the program. Thanks for listening. Bye.